guys, it's Flicka1999 here, uh, back with more PvP content. <laughs> now, one question I get asked a lot by people is, um, why do you have the settings that you do, or like, what are your settings? Uh, how do I configure my auto crystal to be the fastest possible? Now, having a really good set of settings for your auto crystal or your crystal aura. It's not going to make you like super good, but it is going to help you, and it is going to eliminate bottlenecks. So that's having good settings is definitely something you want. Now I'm not just going to give you my settings in this video because they're probably not going to be great for you, and that's because everyone has their own weird playstyle. So um, my settings are probably not going to work well for you, believe it or not. There are good settings, but they're not going to work well for you. So what I would suggest is you get your own settings and I'm going to tell you how to do that in this video. I'm going to be using Auto Crystal Rewrite and Style Hack for this simple uh, example, mostly because everyone has access to it. It's a free open source client that anyone can get their hands on. Heck, you can like build it from source if you want to. I'll probably put the GitHub in the description if you want to do that. But um. Yeah, I'm mainly going to be using that as an example. Also, I was going to use Feature Auto Crystal, but then I realized it's not like entirely tick based. And this cell hack one is, and that's what most clients are using these days. So, let's get into it. Uh, break mode depends on what you want to do with it. Break mode just means like uh, when it's going to break crystals, how it's going to behave when it chooses which crystals to break. For example, Always break mode is just gonna always break crystals, no matter where you place them. If you place them on your feet, it's gonna break them. Whatever. Um, smart is not gonna like break stuff right next to your feet, because that would kill you. Uh, it only breaks stuff that's like near the enemy, for example. I don't like this mode as much because there's sometimes when the enemies open the crystal and I'll still be taking damage from it, like right here. I still want to do that because I know how to move around and heal enough so that he'll pop and I won't. So I'd recommend not using the smart mode. I'd recommend using most. Uh, only own only destroys your own crystals, which was pretty good. I mean, I'd recommend that one as well because then you're not destroying his crystals. There's sometimes when you would want to do that, but again, that's situational. If you want it to work best under every situation, uh, always will be the best overall one to go with but you can toy around with the other ones because everyone's playstyle is different uh... next one place mode you to have most or lethal now lethal is supposedly just only places ones that are going to do like a lot of damage next to him whereas most will like place them wherever according to your other settings I prefer most, just because lethal barely places any crystals, and it's not great for the ping that I play at. But you could experiment around with those two settings, most and lethal, and figure out which ones work for you. Alright, so now we're done with that, we're going to get down into the real meaty settings, all this stuff. This is pretty crazy. Uh, the first one I'm going to go with is place radius, I'm just going to go down the list. Place radius... <coughs> What you want to do is, you can like slide it up and down, you can see all the different options you have. Now, just because you can slide it all the way to one side, does not mean that that's going to be the best. For example, if I put it all the way to five blocks, that doesn't mean I'm going to be able to place like five blocks through walls, uh, placing on a guy at the other side of the map. No, depends on the server. Uh, CrystalPvP.cc, I know you can just max it out, and as long as you're not doing it through walls, it'll work decently well. Uh... On 2B PvP, I think the ideal one is like between like 4.2 and like 4.5, somewhere in there. Just, I haven't played on that server in any real capacity in a while. So, I don't know the best settings for that. Uh, but this is how far away from you it's going to place your crystals, basically. For example, if I have my place radius at 3, it's probably going to place like here, but it won't place farther. If I had it on 5, it'll be placing all the way down there. Then we got break radius, which is the same thing. All those same rules apply as place radius, except it's for breaking crystals. So, break radius of 5, it's gonna break crystals all the way over here. If I had it just set at like 3, and I was standing over there, it would not break that crystal over there. Now, walls range is how it's going to act through walls. 
Uh, now this is a weird one because it can't be, it doesn't work on the same principles as placing in break radius. This is through walls, so if I set up a wall here, and I put a crystal over there, if I'm over here, I can't actually hit this. Your range is reduced a lot through walls. Uh, now instead of going and like spending 10 minutes trying to explain, I know I said I wanted to explain how all the settings work, but... It's weird because it's a server by server thing. Now normally, the best range is like three blocks through walls. Because, now let me tell you, three blocks through walls is good because um, if you have it at exactly three, it'll always be able to break it through walls. Like right here, this is like a three block range. One, two, one, two, and then three. So if I was here, it's always going to be able to break through this wall. Now, if I have it on 3.5 or something higher, it'll try, say I have it on like 6, or like, we'll say 4 for example, I don't think it goes to 6, but if I had it at like 4, or like 5, something like this, right? And if I set it that high, it would be trying to break this crystal, but it would not be able to hit it. So it would just stand there trying to break it, hitting at it, and it would not be doing anything. And this is what's called getting a crystal or a hung up, because it gets stuck on that one crystal, and then it can't do anything else. See, so if I get it stuck on that one crystal, and a guy is sitting next to me over here, totally exposed, it's not gonna be able to do anything, because it's still trying to break that one crystal. And that's why having your range reduced so that it ignores this crystal when it's through a wall is good, because then it can say, oh, we got a guy over here, that crystal doesn't matter, I can now place on him over here. Uh, now, the range you want on this, 3.0 is obviously going to be the best one. That's the most consistent. Uh, you won't get any hang-ups at 3.0 in my experience. I've played with that for a long time. But most recently, I switched over to using 3.5 because there's a lot of instances where it can hit through 3.5 blocks of wall. And there is some instances where it'll get hung up at that range, but it won't be very often. So I'd uh, recommend putting it between 3.0 and 3.5. Alright, the next setting we have is multi-place, and this is one that I'm just going to show you. Uh, multi-place off. So, I'll show you and then explain it. So that's multi-place off. Let's turn it on. I'm sure you can see the difference there. Now, it basically just means it places way more crystals around your enemy, which can be good and it can be bad. For example, the obvious downside is it uses a lot more crystals. Like, you can go through a stack of crystals in under 10 seconds if you have good ping using multi-place on this crystal aura. Uh, I'd recommend leaving it off, but if you want to place a lot of crystals and you want to get more pops, uh, you can turn it on. It's a personal preference thing. If you value pops more, like popping your enemy, over, uh, like, managing your inventory well, then you want to have it on. But if you're more like a gear-based player and you like managing your gear a lot to try to, like, outlast your opponent and stuff, then turn it off. I'm just going to leave it off because I don't personally like it. Now, ticks is the number of ticks to ignore on client update. This is, like, basically just the delay of the crystal aura. Now, higher is going to make the crystal aura slower. See if that's like really slow. Zero. Ridiculously fast. Uh, now I know on CrystalPVP.cc you can have it at zero, and it depends on the anti-cheat. Like I know on 2B PVP you have to have it at like between two and three. So this is just depends on the server anti-cheat. Uh, probably you're gonna want it on most servers, probably somewhere between like one and four. Uh, on CPVP you can have it at zero. On 2B PVP it has to be like two or three. Um, I'm just going to put it at 1 for the sake of the tutorial. Alright, min damage is the amount of damage required to, um, it's how much damage, like, it'll place at. For example, if the min damage is, like, 8, it won't be placing over here where it's going to do practically no damage. It has to do at least 8 damage in that placement. So, yeah, you get the point of that. Uh, because obviously if you have it like at zero, it's going to be wasting crystals, placing them over here and stuff, where they literally do zero damage, and it's just a waste of crystals. Uh, so, you definitely want to have that 
at something. You don't want to just leave it at zero. Um, it's very. This is like a huge part of your crystal settings. So this is probably one of the most important settings, and it's very subject to playstyle. Uh, if you're like an aggro playstyle or something, you might want to have it higher. If you're like passive, you might want to lower it down a little bit more. I'm just going to put it at like 5 for the sake of the tutorial, since that's a pretty middle of the road number. I know some people like to have it at like 11 or 12 or like something. I used to play with it at 6 for a long time. I found that was a pretty middle of the road one. So, yeah. It's just a personal preference, depends on what your play style is. So, let me show you what that looks like. Let me put it at like 20. And then minimum damage 0. Actually, not gonna make any uh, any difference here because this is just a naked player. I can't put armor on it. It's a fake player. But if it was an actual player, you would definitely see a big difference. So I'd recommend you go try that out on other players, and you'll get an idea of how it makes a difference. Generally, higher min damage is gonna place less crystals, and lower min damage is gonna place more. So that's another thing to take into consideration. All right, next setting up max self damage now. This is basically how much, it's like min damage, but the opposite and for yourself. This is how much damage it, it'll do to you. So, if it's like at 8, it's not going to place crystals near you that'll do more than 8 damage to you. Uh, so basically it just pre prevents yourself from like getting popped on your own crystal aura. So, this is another personal preference one. For example, I like my crystal at a place wherever it can to get the enemy, no matter what it is to me. So, I usually just put it at, like, the highest thing. I know the most, I think, like, the most a crystal can do to you is, like, 18 damage or something. When it feed places, something like that. Uh, but I know some people, especially if you're, like, an aggro player, you're moving around out of cover a lot. They want to have that lower, so they don't, like, blow themselves up on their own crystal aura. And I played with it like that for a while, and it does help in some circumstances. So, that's a good one to go for, if that's what you want to do. I'm, for the sake of the tutorial, just going to max it out. Now, face place. Uh, this is how much HP your enemy has to be at before it ignores min damage and starts placing anywhere to do damage. For example, if your enemy gets a crystal, doesn't pop though, and jumps into a hole at really low HP, and your min damage is like 8 or something, it's going to say, oh, he's in a hole, I can't do 8 damage to him, I better not place. Even though you could pop him if you just place 2 more crystals. This is what this fixes. If he's below a certain health, it'll ignore that min damage setting so that it can get a pop on him. Uh, I like to have mine at 10 or 11. That's pretty high for some people, by some people's standards. But 11, 10 and 11 is the health you're usually at when you pop. That way I can continue face placing him and pop him a second time if possible. It doesn't usually work out that way because I play with 100 ping, but you get the point. Uh, again, the higher this is, the more often your enemy face placing people and doing damage to them. So higher is going to use more crystals, lower is going to save more crystals, but it might get you less pops. So it's a question of where you want to put it. I'm just going to put it at 10. Now auto switch is for if you're playing with main hand like I am for the sake of this tutorial. Uh, let me just bind this to a key real quick so that I can show you how it is. It basically means if you toggle this on and it starts placing, it'll automatically switch in your hotbar to crystal. So watch. See that? Just watch my hotbar. It automatically switches to crystal. So this is a really helpful setting. Um, that goes hand in hand with another one you'll see a lot in crystal auras for settings. is no gap switch, which I don't think Salhack Auto Rewrite has it. But... It's pretty important one. I'd recommend turning that one on as well, which basically means it won't auto switch while you're eating a gapple. Because otherwise, you could be eating a gapple trying to heal to keep from popping, and then it switches off gaps and you pop. So, if your crystal aura has that, that's another one. Uh, pause if hitting block is another one. Uh, it basically, if you're like mining him, uh, let me just show you. Basically, if I'm and I'm hitting a block, it should be stopping. It's probably conflicting with my other settings, but 
I'll just explain it. Basically, what it's gonna do is if you're hitting a block like with a pickaxe or something, you know, as you're like mining him or something, it's not gonna like switch and start. Uh, what you call it? Crystalling him. It's probably because I have auto switch on. So if I'm hitting a block like this, see, I have it on right now. It's not doing anything. So yeah, you get the point. Game mode one, back in creative mode. Okay, next setting. Pause while eating. This is one I would recommend leaving off, especially if you're um, if you're main hand playing. Maybe let me just grab some more crystals here. If you're playing main hand, maybe it just pauses the crystal or stops doing what it's doing while you're eating apples. If you're off hand though, definitely leave this off because the whole point of off hand is you want to be eating gaps while crystalline. So I recommend leaving it off and just toggling as you eat, because that gives you more control. But if you want to automate it more, then sure, use that on. No suicide basically uh, means, and this is one I'd recommend maybe turning on. If it's going to place at your feet and do enough damage to pop you, then it won't destroy those crystals. So it basically acts like one to, again, protect you from popping yourself on your own crystal aura but it's going to only engage if that actual crystal would do like enough damage to kill or pop you. So that's a good one to have on. Anti-weakness, this is important, uh, especially if you're in um, offhand or main hand. Well, it's important pretty much everywhere then. Basically, if you have a weakness effect, let me just put down some crystals and I'll show you. If I have my hand on the gap, it's going to switch to a sword, if you saw my hotbar, to break the crystals. It is still slower, but everything's going to be slower when you have weakness. But it will still let you use your crystal aura while you have weakness on. Which is good, because it, it, it negates weakness a little bit in main hand. It's still going to slow your crystal aura down by a lot. And I mean a lot. It's not slowed down much here, because we're in a zero ping environment in single player, but... It will slow it down, but it's better than having no crystal lore. Okay, so render just basically means it's gonna show that thing uh, when you turn the crystal lore on. Now let me debind it because it keeps turning on. Offer. So right now you're not showing any render to show where you're placing. Now all these red things, this is just RGB settings for like what color you want to be, so you see I turned the red all the way to zero, it's going to change the color. If I want to like set it like, I don't know, something random, just change the color by adjusting these. And I, all of these, all like that is white, and I'm pretty sure if I do all of these, it's going to be black. So I like to leave it at white just because it's easier to see, and alpha is going to be how transparent it is. If I turn it really far down, it's very transparent, hard to see. I turn all the way up, it's like 100% solid. I like to put it somewhere in the middle. Hidden just hides it in the array list, and key bind is just whatever bind you have it at. Uh, so that's that for Crystal Aura settings in Cell Hack. Uh, again, play around with these settings, choose which ones work best for you, don't just like copy settings from people. And yeah, that's gonna be it.